well, well, well. I'm going to have to deal with this, it looks like. Uh, <laughs> there was a Table Mountain Loop Road, but no one's come out here and cleared this off. And it's obvious that I'm not going over that on my T7. Today I'm going to go up into the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument and uh, I'm going to ride up to uh, the base of Table Rock and then try to get to the top of Table Rock. I probably won't ride my bike to the top, but uh, I can get pretty close and then just hike the rest. Okay, I'm not a half a minute into the video and I have to stop and correct myself. I'm not going to Table Rock. There are two Table Rock Mountains near Medford, but I'm going to Table Mountain. Table Mountain is east of Ashland. And also, Table Mountain technically is not in the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument. It's just outside of it. But I'm going to be riding through the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument to get to Table Mountain. So now that I got that square, let's get back to the video. First of all, I'm going to need to get some gas, though. <laughs> uh, the Nomad uh, gets about 200 miles to the tank, and I'm getting down to less than one bar, so let me fill it up. So on a previous video, I talked about how I was having a hard time shifting gears with my new riding boots. And, uh, you know, I've gone on a few rides since I made that video, and I'm starting to figure it out. <laughs> um, in the old days, when I would just wear shoes, I would put my shoe underneath the uh, uh, gear shifter, and and I would lift up, and uh, and then I would step on it if I if I wanted to go down. But with these boots, I discovered that uh, they work best if I touch the gear shifter with the edge of the boot and I lift it so I I basically uh, don't ever have my shoe underneath the gear shifter like I used to do. Instead, I've got it to the side and then I just touch the gear shifter and uh, with the force of the boot and, and the sole of the boot then I'm able to, to shift up. So it's taken me a little bit of uh, you know, practice, but uh, it's gotten a lot better. I'm, I'm missing fewer gears now than I was. So that's a good sign. You know, it's just uh, some things take a little more time and uh, a little bit of, uh, of discovery. Uh, and you just, don't give up too soon on it. I guess that's the moral of the story. It's a little bit hazy out right now, but there's a lot of wildfires going on. Uh, there's nothing right real close to me. There's maybe a uh, two hours ride away, but we're still getting a little bit of a drift of the smoke. Fun, uh, this is a fun road to ride on. You know, you can see it's got a lot of uh, twisties on it. It's uh, every couple years, though, there's a landslide that takes out the road, and the state highway department has to has to to close it and uh, you know refix it. You know, fix it because it's just on a really really steep uh, incline. But, you know, if you go off the side here, there's nothing going to stop till you get way to the bottom so it makes a lot of people nervous it, it makes me a little nervous so obviously I'm not gonna plow through here going really fast I don't ride fast anyhow I am a I am a pretty much a cautious uh, you know driver you know whether uh, whether uh, I'm in a car or I'm on my motorcycle uh, speed is the thing that's gonna get you in trouble more than anything even if 
a even if you're a skilled rider, you know, you have a more of a chance of getting in trouble if you're going fast. And although I've been riding for, you know, many years, I still don't consider myself a skilled rider. I'm constantly learning. And I'd rather learn at a slow and steady pace, being cautious, than uh, trying to zip through these uh, curves like, uh, like it's a thrill ride. For me, it's... Uh, it's more the scenery and the, and enjoying the ride rather than the thrill of going fast. The Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, which is uh, managed by the Bureau of uh, Land Management, it has a lot of roads. There's, uh, I think, most if not all the roads, including the one that I'm on, they were here well before it was established as a national monument. So it's only been a national monument for a little over 20 years. But it uh, provides a lot of really good off-pavement uh, riding. And, and especially for someone like me, as I've said, without a lot of skills yet, they're pretty good roads. They're not that difficult uh, with a little bit of off-road skill, a little bit of uh, caution, uh, the right tires and, and uh, such. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, so I, I just like to come out here. I don't live very far away, and, and uh, I can explore, get a, a good map, get a Garmin, which I've got, uh, my phone, a lot of backup, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun for a few hours. Okay, so I stopped for a second at this, uh, this intersection with four roads, and looking on my map here and that's me there and so Table Mountain's got to be up this little spur road here looks like it just dead ends there so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and ride up there there's always a risk because I've had this happen before because it's just gonna go up and then end is I'm hoping there's a good level spot up there for me to turn around I had a situation a uh, week or so ago where I got to the end of a road like that which was on a hill and turning around the uh, the bike fell over and so that I don't want that to happen again because that's not fun to pick this beast up and I just realized I've been riding uh, with my ABS on not that that had much of an effect uh, on this road but I just turned it off I saw a sign just a little bit ago and it said Table Mountain Loop. Um, although it doesn't show this loop road uh, here on my uh, on my Garmin, which is right, right here, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but evidently this, oops, look, I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, well, 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 I'm gonna have to deal with this, it looks like. Uh, <laughs> There was a Table Mountain Loop Road, but no one's come out here and cleared this off. And it's obvious that I'm not going over that on my T7. So I'm gonna have to turn this beast around and head on back the other way to get up here to, to Table Rock. So, well, I didn't expect this. Okay, well, I got the Nomad turned around. Uh, I didn't video it, basically, what I did is I decided just to turn off the engine because I don't have any room to turn around. There's really not a turning radius that I can work with anyhow. So I uh, just turned the engine off and just inched it around uh, back and forth, back and forth. And now I'm pointed back out. So feel good about that. The bike's still standing. <laughs> okay, here's the other other uh, end of the loop so I'll try to take this one up to the get to the top of Table Mountain and uh, I think hopefully there's no uh, there's no log at the end of this one
Well, another bit of a surprise, uh, you can probably see on a tree right behind me, that it says gate ahead. So uh, I, I parked uh, the Nomad on this turnaround spot where I see other people have parked. And I'm gonna have to, well, it's fine. I'm gonna walk up and bag this peak on foot and just uh, leave the Nomad parked here in the shade. Well, and sure enough, here is the gate. So I am mighty glad I didn't ride up here because this is on a slant and uh, rutted and rocky, and that would have been really difficult to turn around the T7 right here. Oh boy. So I'm getting a little wiser, hopefully, when I see a pull off spot and I can just walk the rest of the way. I'm going to do that. made it up to the top. It was only about a quarter mile hike from where uh, the gate was, so that's not bad. There's nobody here, but as to be expected, there's all kinds of stuff on the top of Table Mountain because it is a little bit flat. There's uh, radio towers and cell towers and other types of communication towers that I, I don't know what they are. And then there is an old uh, fire lookout tower that's not being used and it may be completely shut down. It looks very old and weathered. It might only be used uh, to house these radio antennas on the top. Out there in distance, you see Mount McLaughlin. There's no snow left on it. That's a volcanic peak. And then uh, down here, you see two reservoirs that are nothing but puddles right now. We're in a serious drought. This is Hyatt uh, and Howard uh, Prairie Reservoirs. And then way off in the distance, you might be able to see what looks like clouds. And I believe that's the smoke from the fire that's um, in central Oregon. And I don't remember the name of that fire, but it's over 200,000 acres. I can see why this is called Table Mountain. I mean, there's a lot of Table Mountains in the United States. And usually it's because they're flat, just like this one is without many trees. So it's an excellent site, obviously, for all these uh, uh, towers up here. Uh, but, it, you know, I'm amazed at how clear it is with the fires that are going on. Off in the distance uh, over here, you can see Pilot Rock, and then uh, heading down towards where I live in Ashland, there's uh, Mount Ashland sitting, like, right there. No snow on it, but you might be able to see the uh, ski runs. And then this would be heading north towards the Rogue River Valley. I don't know the elevation of uh, Table Mountain, this Table Mountain that I'm on, but I'll, I'll post it below. the Nomad and I made it back. We had a, a good time uh, peak bagging up in the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument. Um, I learn something more about the bike every time I go out. Now that I've got about 650 miles on it, um, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable and trying to figure out where my limits are though. <laughs> and so that's kind of where the uh, uh, struggle a little bit comes in right now is uh, still trying to feel comfortable uh, mostly going off-road with a obviously a heavier bigger bike uh, but uh, I'm getting there I'm just gonna keep working at it anyhow I hope you enjoyed the video if you did you know give me a thumbs up if you'd like to see more of my uh, adventures including uh, on my nomad here uh, then subscribe and I'll see you next time on one of my senior moments